today's video, we're gonna go ahead and actually put a lift kit on the engine hoist. So let me show you what I'm working with here. Obviously it's a tall truck, but the main reason is actually because we're in the grass. So it's gonna be hard to use this engine hoist with those traditional metal casters in such soft ground. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and put these eight inch pneumatic casters on it with these um, three by seven inch U-bolts. So I'm just gonna unbolt these guys, put these on. Um, there's technically six wheels on here. So you can't keep the, the folding functionality with this setup because you have that second set of casters here in the middle, but those arms fold up. So in order to put the pneumatic caster on the engine lift with the u-bolts is going to wrap around and you need that area to swing up so with these on you wouldn't be able to fold it up unless you welded it on i'm going to keep mine bolted on so that way when i do have an actual concrete surface i can go back to this standard style and um it'll be low profile for cars because I, I have other vehicles well i have a other vehicle that i, I will be engine swapping pretty soon i'm going to actually use the scissor jack to hold the, I'm gonna use the scissor jack to hold the hoist up while I remove the bolts and basically put the new the new hardware on. This old school jack is super dope. I paid five bucks for this fucking thing. So here's the final product for the lifted engine lift. 
Just gonna give you a quick walkthrough of um, a few of the issues I had while putting it together and uh, maybe save y'all some time. So the guy I saw who built this used 10 inch casters. I used eight inch. I wanted to save on um, on a little bit of height, even though it's still pretty high up in the air. I didn't want to go too high and it'd be, you know, it, I felt like it might be a little obnoxious being that high up because those casters are quite large compared to these when you look at them side by side in the store. Um, now I'm not sure how much of a difference they would make in the grass, um, but, and I'm not sure, I don't even know how to really say this, but I don't know if the setup, the hardware setup is different on those 10 inch ones, but on this eight inch, these come into contact with the U-bolts quite easily. So you gotta make sure they're trimmed nice and flush I did show that earlier in the video with a caption, but I just want to take this time to explain it. Um, also be mindful that you don't over crank on these U bolts where these plates start to bend because then the bearings kind of will bind up. They need to be, the plates need to be flat and parallel for, uh, for those ball bearings to spin around uh, in unison, I guess you could say. Um, another thing I had to do is grind the corners down on a couple of them, more so the ones in the back of the lift, because they were binding up as well. The U-bolts are seven inches long, three inches wide on a three eighths inch um, thread. The threads only come so far. So with my setup, they only, I, I actually ran out of threads. So if I had a, a tap and die set, I would thread them up a little higher. So that way uh, you could crank on them a little better. But like I said, you don't want to over crank them anyway. So just make sure when you're cranking it all together that everything is, you're doing it kind of like in a circular or a cross pattern, not circular, definitely a cross pattern. So you're kind of loading it down evenly and you're putting the same amount of threads on each side. So that was a weird little complication. I was not able to use washers and lock washers. I was only able to use one washer to keep it as thin as possible and I still had to grind them grind the nuts down a little bit so if this is something where you know it's going to be permanent to put these bigger wheels on it I would recommend welding it on I don't think you'd have any of the issues with uh warping I mean it's pretty thick metal um I mean that's pretty much it the the warping and the binding so um I mean that being said I'll show y'all how well it rolls otherwise So the only problem I have is that front right one does like to bind up a little bit right there, but it's kind of hard to tell, but it binds up a lot when you put weight on it. So I was still able to slide it back out under the truck. No problem. As long as everything is aligned correctly, you know, if it, if, if it binds up, see now it's starting to bind up in the back. So that's the only issue I had. So I just have to get a pipe or like from the jack with the weight on it, or you can just kick it a little bit with your foot. So that kind of sucks. But once you break it free, it's kind of hard to steer it with one hand, but it does roll around pretty good for what I need it to. And again, maybe the Maybe the 10 inch casters would roll better in the grass. See, this one's locked up again and then it's free. So hopefully my mistakes will show y'all what to do better. But I'm happy that the engine is out and it's ready to make its way to the machine shop. And uh, I would think by the end of the month, I'll have this motor all put back together. I don't know if the truck will be running because I still gotta get a transmission, transfer case and drive shaft, but kind of tight lifted truck lifted jack or engine hoist whatever you want to call it so on to the next one